This is my Jeep Wrangler Willys Sport, and it is an affordable version of the Jeep Wrangler. Well, as affordable as Wranglers go, and in this video, I'm gonna show you what you don't get if you don't spend a lot of money in the Wrangler lineup, and then we're gonna find out, is that a problem when it comes to off-roading? We're gonna take it up, Cliffhanger 1.0. So how affordable is this Wrangler? Well, the Wrangler lineup starts at about 28,000 and change, about 29 grand, and then goes all the way up well past, I don't know, $80,000 if you get a fully loaded one with the big V8 engine. Now this one comes in about 35K. It's a Willys Sport. So at its foundation, it's a very, very, very stripped down model with no options, but the Willys package gives you the off-road wheels and tires, the rock sliders, the limited slip diffs. So that's why it's a little bit more expensive than your typical entry-level bare bones model but it is still very very much bare bones now the key to this wrangler looks pretty standard it says jeep on it and it is actually quite massive compared to the other keys on this key ring even compared to my palm you'll see what a chunker this is but when you flip it upside down you quickly realize it's missing some buttons it's actually missing all the buttons it does not have a lock button an unlock button it doesn't have a remote start it doesn't have a panic button this vehicle has no power locks whatsoever. Now, how do you get into the vehicle? Well, you get into the vehicle like you would in the 1960s. So you actually have to put the key in the door. You do that by flipping open the switchblade and then inserting it and manually twisting it. And that is genuinely how you have to lock and unlock both the driver and the passenger door and even the swing gate. So you'll notice here that there is a keyhole and when it's locked, you actually have to get out just plop open the key and that's how you get into the trunk there is no power actuator the weird part though is even though you need the key to get in and out of the jeep you don't need it to start it you see the wrangler comes standard with push button start there's no reason for this fob to be so massive i wish that the vehicles without all the buttons would get a substantially smaller and more compact fob another feature that this wrangler doesn't have power window so if you're used to jeeps you'll know that the power window switches are actually located here in the middle but because they don't have power windows instead you get a cubby so of course the windows are manual you've got crank windows on both the driver and the passenger side pretty old school i actually like this feature a lot just nice and simple and pretty straightforward to use as well although it is a slight pain if you want to roll down both windows um, when you get into the vehicle because you have to reach over but i think people know how manual windows work this should not come as a surprise to many <laughs> now another kind of odd thing in 2021 as this is a 2021 model year the fact that we do not have power mirrors on this vehicle either so to adjust the mirrors you actually have to physically push in on the corners very very old school now what's the result of all these manual features the end result is that there is no electrical connections in the doors whatsoever because there are no power accessories in the door. It makes it easier to pull the door on and off. Also, just a lot simpler. So if you do get a base spec like this, you don't get the optional LEDs. You have to pay extra for those and they are quite expensive. They're also ridiculously easy to steal as it turns out. So it's not uncommon if you live in a big city like LA or New York to get your LED headlights stolen. Probably not gonna happen with the halogen units because they are not very good in either high or low beam, but I do still prefer the look of the old school halogen bulb. It just looks very, very kind of approachable and classic in my opinion. They also have these little Jeep grills there on the inside near the bulb. Now, moving out to the fenders here, you can see we also have halogen turn signals and running lights as well. So the really fancy Jeep Wranglers have these little strip LEDs, uh, looks very cool, but if you don't wanna pay extra, you just get little halogen bulbs there in the fenders too. One more thing worth noting too is no automatic headlights. So you have to remember to turn the headlights on and off, although you do get standard fog lights. The base Wrangler has a very standard looking steering wheel, and by standard I mean plastic, so doesn't have the nice leather wrapped steering wheel. I'm actually kind of getting used to it. I'm typically not a fan of these plastic units, but this one is starting to grow on me. We also don't have the bright accents along the, uh, the trim lines of the steering wheel, so just a standard black plastic, although it is worth noting, it does still have cruise control from the factory as standard. It also has buttons behind the steering wheel for both audio and tune, and there are buttons over here to control the little info screen. The info screen on the base model Wrangler is very small, but it's actually super useful. Now you can kind of see the bezel here where a larger screen would live. Uh, you can get, of course, like the seven and the 8.4 inch screen, but this one is said to be 
a five inch screen, although I'm not really sure how they're measuring this because I think in no dimension is this actually five inches, but it's super easy to use, very convenient, and actually really pretty good. So at the top here in the audio setting, I've got various presets. It is a touchscreen unit. Um, below that, of course, I have the option to cycle through the different stations like that, or it's got a real two knob if I want to do it manually. I also have to the left, bottom left, both the power button and the volume knob, which is good. Uh, radio, AM, FM, I didn't want to pay extra for XM, although that is an option on this display, but it does have Bluetooth audio, which is awesome, with phone connectivity. Over on the right, there's a button for a compass, which is a compass, not really sure how useful that is. There's also various different settings, and then if you go to more, it gives us outside temperature, the clock, and a rear view camera. The other thing you don't get in the basic Wrangler is, well, sophisticated climate controls. In fact, believe it or not, air conditioning is still an option, even in 2021. I think this is probably the only vehicle for sale today where air conditioning is an option, at least here in the US, let me know if that's true. You also don't get automatic climate control, so you have one knob for the fan speed, one knob for blue or red, and then one knob to distribute air where it needs to go. But no heated seats, no heated steering wheel on this trim. One thing I do love about the Base Wrangler is you can get it with a couple of different seat options, even at no cost. So you can get it in black cloth or this, the Heritage Tan, and this is a big deal for me. I really don't like black interiors, I just feel very tight, closed off, and a little bit dreary, but the tan looks really nice. It is harder to keep clean, especially with my uh, Bernie's Mountain Dog puppy, but it looks great, and I'm glad that this was an option. There are tons of different top and roof configurations on the Wrangler, but only one that is free, and that's this one, the basic soft top. There is actually a premium soft top as well with a slightly thicker material. You can also, of course, get the hard top and the power tops and all that, but this is the one that comes equipped from the factory on the base vehicles, and actually, it's pretty good. The, uh, the windows are nice and flush. They don't have the wave like <laughs> certain other vehicles, and it's a fully zipperless system. So uh, the whole top is actually just held on with these plastic channels, and they work really, really well at uh, securing your stuff and keeping you actually dry. I, I've uh, really driven this through some pretty serious rainstorms in the last couple of weeks and have stayed perfectly dry, no water intrusion whatsoever. And then there's this channel that you pop out like that, and then you've got access to the rear. Now these side windows come out in a very similar fashion. They just unclip from these channels um, and then you can run it as like the pagoda top or you can fold the whole thing back they push up a couple of levers very convenient now of course all wranglers do have back seats this one completely removable so you can fold it you can also tumble it and then you can remove it like that now it is of course worth noting that you can't actually get into the trunk with the tailgate locked so um there's this big support bar across the back that is secured in place when this is closed, so you can't open it up just by walking along. Of course, a thief with a knife could pretty quickly slash through <laughs> the back windows or the side windows, so a hard top would be better if you live, for example, in a big city, but I like the soft top option. A, for this Sunrider feature where you just throw it back and get into the sun, and B, this is a little bit lighter, and um, it's nice pulling it off in the summer. I just realized I haven't taken off my little protective film for the dome light. That was very satisfying. So audio and speaker wise, this Wrangler has a base system. So what does that include? That includes two speakers on the top of the dash, two speakers at the bottom of the dash, and the speakers up here above your head. And those really are what provide a lot of the audio experience. Of course, if you want something a little bit more premium, there's the Alpine system, which gives you a giant subwoofer in the trunk. But actually, I think the base system is plenty good enough. From a safety standpoint, this Wrangler has four airbags, one for the driver, one for the passenger, and then side airbags as well, but we still don't know the official NHTSA safety ratings. Now, from an engine standpoint, the standard engine, that was a funny noise, is the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. As you see it in this model, it makes 285 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque, and if you don't want to pay extra monies, uh, the only transmission option is a six-speed manual, which is great for me. So uh, I'll actually really like the 3.6. It's a very strong engine. It's been around for almost a decade now in the Jeep Wrangler, uh, proving itself to be quite reliable. Of course, if you want to spend more, you can get the two-liter turbo or the uh, V6 diesel or the plug-in hybrid version or the V8 version. There's a lot of different options, but my choice when people ask, just get the tried and true Pentastar naturally aspirated V6. Now granted, for 35K, the amount of features you get in the Wrangler are pretty limited. 
Not having power windows or power door locks in 2021 is quite an astonishing thing for a lot of folks, but for me it doesn't matter because what this Wrangler is built to do is go up gnarly hills like that, in this case Cliffhanger 1.0, and I think you'll find even if you spend less than 50 or 60k for a uh, Rubicon, you can still have a lot of fun out in the dirt. The funny thing is, even though this vehicle doesn't have most features you find in a lot of new cars, over the last few months, I haven't missed a single feature that you'd find even in a luxury car. I mean, you just don't use so many of the new options that are available in modern vehicles. Uh, as long as it has Bluetooth audio, a decent sound system, you know, air conditioning and heat, what else do you really need on a daily basis? I really love uh, just the way that this vehicle makes you feel as you drive around. It feels special driving it. And then you take it out here to a Colorado off-road trail and it will amaze you where it can go because it still has four-wheel drive with the low range. It's got something called BLD, which is brake lock differential, so it'll break the spinning wheel and force part of the wheel with traction. And it has a limited slip, which we are going to try out right now as we get really articulated. So there you can see that was off the ground there on opposite ends of the vehicle. And once again there, and even at one and a half mile an hour, it walked up it. That obstacle challenges so many vehicles, even new vehicles with a lot of off-road gear. And it just goes to show that any Wrangler, because of the solid axles, because of the increased wheel articulation over a standard vehicle, uh, because of the, the low gearing, will take you places that you just wouldn't believe. I mean, I really don't think that 99% of people need a Rubicon. A wheelies equipped vehicle like this with the LSD, and the additional uh, protection on the rockers with the good tires that this came with from the factory will do everything you need it to. Genuinely, it's incredible where this thing will go. Um, even without lockers or that cool terrain control where it'll, you know, walk up without you touching the throttle, it's just the perfect amount of capability for the vast majority of folks. And we'll see that one more time when we descend here some of that impressive front wheel articulation and I wasn't taking an easy lineup here I tried to make it harder on purpose but you can see picked up a wheel there in the back but it does such a good job of maintaining um, the contact between uh, the tire and the ground and I ah, just love doing this kind of thing I mean yes I don't have heated seats and you know premium audio but fold the roof back grab some friends hit some fun trails and see where your Jeep will take you. So as you can see from this demonstration, not a lot of on paper features and comfort options, but a lot of built-in fun, a lot of built-in off-road pedigree, still solid axles, and you can still get out and put a huge smile on your face, even if you don't have 40, 50, 60K to spend on a new Jeep Wrangler. Well, let me know what you think of my Jeep in the comment section below. And as always, this has been Tommy with the Fast Lane Car and the Fast Lane Off-Road. Check out tflcar.com and tfloffroad.com for the latest and greatest in new vehicle reviews.